Good afternoon. I'm uh, happy that you're with us, thankful that you're with us. First of all, I want to thank uh, our worship leader for today, Beto Nicodemus. She is the cousin of Rowena Oteide. She is from the church uh, from the Philippines, Lord Jesus Christ International Ministry. Uh, we were so grateful you were with us and I, I love the worship and that uh, God is there and God is uh, Jesus, his name is above every other name and Jesus is the name that can only save, yeah? And I will build my life upon your love. This is a strong foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. If Jesus is the center of your life, yeah, then you will not be shaken. He is your strong foundation. Amen and Amen. Beto, may God bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon your life and give you peace. And may the joy of the Lord be upon your life. I pray that God will use you mightily and strongly in the worship ministry. And that you it will grow and that God also <clears throat> through His Spirit will give you new songs. New songs in your heart, even in your dreams, even in your thoughts. Songs will come. So, and that you will make new music. That, uh, that you will worship God and give glory to God and God alone through the music. Thank you. And God will do it in your life. Amen and amen. As I want to go back to last week. Uh, I have a new preaching today, but last week we talked about the Holy Spirit a few weeks. I want to say something again about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As you know, we have nine gifts of the Spirit and we have nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of of a word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of speaking a word of faith, yeah? the gift of healing, the gift of performing miracles, yeah? the gift of discerning of spirits, and the gift of speaking in tongues, and the gifts of translating in tongues. Yeah? And as I said, the <clears throat> the gifts are the, from the Holy Spirit is not, are not from ourselves. It comes from God. And when we are used by God, may the, the gifts are working through our lives. But we have nothing to do with that. It's, it, it comes from God. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit, this is the, the process, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to make us holy. And that is a lifetime thing. Yeah? It will never end until we leave this earth. Uh, let uh, Some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit are joy, peace, um, uh, long-suffering, yeah, goodness, kindness, patience, and so on. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But uh, one thing I want to repeat about one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is speaking in tongues. To make it clear, if, if, you do not, if you do not speak in tongues, doesn't mean you do not have the Holy Spirit. But on the other hand, you should know that, uh, that if you don't speak in tongues, means you do not desire to use that gift of speaking in tongues. Because I'm glad to speak in tongues because it edifies myself. It helps me in my prayer life when I sometimes don't know what to pray. Then the Holy Spirit leads me in tongues to pray. Yeah? <clears throat> and uh, why I say that, that the gifts are for everyone and every gift can be used in your life. And the gift of speaking in tongues 
I said it's because you don't desire it. And why I say that? Because the Apostle Paul also said that we need to, uh, what did he say? Paul said, pursue love. Yeah? And desire, yeah? Desire the spiritual gifts. So you can desire every spiritual gift that is there. Amen? And uh, today, I want to speak about something else. I want to speak about um, a parable in Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. And it's, uh, you can open your Bible there, and it's about a parable about the kingdom of heaven and about ten virgins. And as we will see, five were wise, and five virgins were foolish. But first of all, let us read this passage. It's chapter 25, the Gospel of Matthew, the Good News of Matthew. What is written there? Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like the ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then... All those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, and for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No less, there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Well, afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the, the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So, it is a, a whole scripture. And there is so many things in it. First of all, I said it's about five wise virgins and five foolish virgins and they were all waiting for the bridegroom to come yeah they all they all believe that Jesus will come back or they believe that the Messiah will come because Jesus is the Messiah so they were waiting uh, for the bridegroom but there was one Big problem. First of all, you can see there was one big problem. And we can read this in verse 5. And what was that problem? Do you know? They were all slumbered and slept. You can say they were tired and they were sleeping. So it's like some say today it's already 2000 years ago. And Jesus didn't come back yet. So they say, why should he come now? But this is something that was already said for a long, long, long time. Even in the times of Jesus, they said that. If we go to the scripture of 2 Peter, that's the letter of Peter, it's almost at the end of your Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3. Yeah. And... Uh, Verse 3. Also they said in that time already. Maybe you, you have the same thing. You say, where is, why, where is he? Why is he not coming yet? But even in that time it says there in 
chapter 3, verse 3 and 2 Peter, Jesus, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. So people will mock about it even. Yeah? Walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Yeah, it's already a long, long, long time and Jesus did not return. But secondly, you can see that the bridegroom came. Yeah, he came in the middle of the night. In verse 6, behold, there was a cry in the night and behold, the bridegroom is coming. So, when Jesus comes, it will not be in the time we think he will come. Because you will think, oh, he will come during the daytime. But he came suddenly, he came even at midnight. Yeah, nobody was expecting him anymore because it was midnight. That's why they were slumbering and they were sleepy. Yeah, but he came at an unexpected time moment. This is the same thing we can read in Matthew chapter 25 from 36 to 41. And it says there, but of that day and hour no one knows of the coming of Jesus, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were so, also will be the coming of the Son of man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. This is, he, that's why God wants to encourage us to be watching out for his coming, to be ready, to be prepared. Because you don't know the exact hour when God will come. Third, I can see that there were two uh, different virgins. Yeah, the, There were five that were wise, five were foolish, and there were the five wise, they took uh, oil in their vessels with their lamps. And they could go into the wedding. The others were left behind. Why they were left behind? Do you know why they were left behind? Because they didn't have the oil. In the Gospel of John says, in chapter 3, verse 3, they said, Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. He said that to Nicodemus. Yeah? So, we need to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. It's, it says you will not see and you will not enter. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You will blind, be blind for it. And you cannot enter it. This is, this is what, what happens when you, you don't know Jesus. When you do not have that personal relationship, you cannot enter. And what did the bridegroom say to the foolish when they wanted to go in? What did he say to them? Do you know what did he said when those versions arrived? 
They say, Lord, Lord, open to us. What was the answer? It was not so nice, the answer. Jesus said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. That's why I have those questions for you. Do you know Jesus? Do you have that personal relationship with Him? Are you born again? Does the Holy Spirit live in you? These are all questions you have to, to give an answer to. If you can say yes to all these questions, then you will be like the five, five wise virgins, ready to meet the bridegroom, Jesus, and to go with him to the wedding. Because it's the desire of God that all will be saved. Yeah. And why is now the reason that Jesus didn't came back? This is a verse I already mentioned before, but I want to mention again in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. There you can see the reason why it's Jesus is still delaying for his coming. And that says there in chapter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Yeah, that means God is not slow. He will not delay. He will be on time concerning his promise. As some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Yeah, God is patient for each soul that lives on this earth. Why? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the main reason why Jesus didn't come back yet. We are living in a time of grace. That means that God wants to save every soul, living soul, that lives here on earth. And it's not to know things about Jesus. It's not to, to believe that there is a God. There is, it's not about, yeah, is there no a heaven, yes or no. It's not all these questions. But the main question is, do you have the Holy Spirit into your life? Do you have that personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ? Yeah. Do you, are you sure that you have that eternal life? Are you sure that you will be at the wedding of the Lamb? You only can be sure when you are born again. When you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior into your life. I don't know. Maybe you say, yeah, I hope there is life after death. Maybe you say, I hope there is something. But this is not enough. You need to be born again. You need to have that experience into your life. If I refer now back to my own life, 30 years ago when he became a Christian, I was teached in the Word of God and I, I started to believe the Word of God. I started to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I started to believe that Jesus died for my sins. I started to believe that Jesus was God. Like it says in the Gospel of John, first, first chapter, first one, in the beginning was God, uh, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This was in the beginning with God. That's referring to Jesus that says in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. God, this is what you need. I remember that I start to believe 
in the word of God. I start to believe and to trust in Jesus and in him alone. And I remember very well my first prayer. You know what was my first prayer that I did in public? My first prayer I did in public was about the ten virgins. I said, God, I know there are ten virgins. Ten were foolish. Five were wise. I pray that I will be with those wise virgins. Thank you, Lord, that I will be with those five wise virgins. This was my first prayer in public. People were amazed and astonished because it came from, from the parable of Jesus. But I know up to now yeah, that this is what God wants. He wants that we start that personal relationship with, with Him. That's the moment we need to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yeah, it's the Spirit that gives lives. And if you do not or you not be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, neither you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, this is your time. You can open your heart. You can just say a simple prayer like we, I will do now. You can say, Lord Jesus, Thank you that you are God. I recognize you as my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to enter into my life. I am longing to have that personal relationship with you. Make me born again. I want to be like the, those wise virgins that has that oil together with the lamp. That oil that represents the Holy Spirit. In my life, thank you, Jesus, of receiving you through your spirit in my life. And I ask you to protect me and to guide me. I surrender everything in my life. Thank you that you died for my sins and that my sins are forgiven. Please protect me and lead me day by day. I want to follow you, Jesus, for the rest of my life. Amen and Amen. If you did that prayer with a sincere heart, I assure you, Jesus enter into your life. You are born again right now. And then you will be like the wise virgins. The one that have that really and true relationship with the only living God. God the Father through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening and watching. I see you back again next week for the new worship and the new preaching. Amen. Bye.